So I've talked about this character in some of the other videos that I've done, but the thing is, this guy had such a traumatic impact on me at three years old. He deserves his own video. For the two or three people out there who haven't seen the film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, stop. However, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you know the movie. The classic animation and live action hybrid film where cartoon star Roger Rabbit is framed for murder and detective Eddie Valiant, who hates tunes after his brother was killed by one, is commandeered to solve the case and prove his innocence. This is my favorite film of all time, and someday I will be doing a full review of it. I have larger than necessary plans for it, but short and sweet, amazing film. There, that's my review for now. Let's talk Judge Doom. It's really hard to imagine this film without this character, and it very well could have turned out that way. The original novel, Who Censored Roger Rabbit by Gary K. Wolf, didn't have him in it. In fact, early versions of the script didn't even have him. Some versions had Baby Herman as the villain, while some had Jessica Rabbit as the villain. The character of Judge Doom wasn't created until later later drafts. And let's be honest, they hit the jackpot with Christopher Lloyd, one of my heroes. I love his stories when he talks about the judge, relating to those who tell them he traumatized them as kids with the character. His story was about how he saw Snow White in the theater as a child, and how the ending scared him. So when he played the judge, he considered it payback. A lot of people in the Saudis here have come up and said how when they were children and they saw that movie, it horrified them. Because that's okay. <laughs> I love him. And talk about commitment. The man actually shaved his head bald, except for a little tuft of hair on the top of his head. Depending on when they filmed the final showdown, it's a fair guess that he had that ridiculous haircut for several months. And like I said, it's hard to imagine the movie without this character, but it's even harder to imagine anyone other than Christopher Lloyd in this role. Although some interesting actors were considered to play this part, including Christopher Lee, John Cleese, Roddy McDowell, Eddie Deason, and Sting. Yeah, Sting. But the most notorious candidate was none other than the great Tim Curry. Can you imagine him with evil red eyes coming at you with a buzzsaw? <laughs> I believe it was Christopher Lloyd's idea not to blink any time that he was on screen, definitely adding to the creepy factor, foreshadowing the reveal. Also, where is that breeze coming from? The filmmakers blew fans on Lloyd, which made his outfit constantly wisp around, further adding to the feeling that there's something very unnatural about this guy. Furthermore, Doom's movements were often stiff and jerky, often cartoony, and his skin tone is pale white. Also, during the climax, Eddie is sweating and the judge is as dry as a popcorn fart. In the Roger Rabbit comic book series, The Resurrection of Doom issue establishes him as a disturbed toon named Baron Von Rotten, the toon of a thousand faces. It is also speculated that the poster in R.K. Maroon Studios of Pistol Packing Possum is in fact Doom or Baron Von Rotten playing the part of that cartoon. While this certainly adds closure to who the tune actually is, I've always preferred how the movie ends with Doom's identity and what he looks like left a mystery. And since that comic wasn't written by Jeffrey Price and Peter S. Seaman, the same people who originally wrote and created Judge Doom, I prefer to dismiss this as a definitive answer. Being left a mystery is a lot more interesting to me. Some things that didn't end up in the movie, but was in the script, was Volatar, Doom's pet vulture. That was supposed to be animated onto Christopher Lloyd's shoulder. A big chunk of the fight out at the end of the film was cut, and in a third version draft of the script, Volatar actually grabs Eddie by the shoulders and flies him around the Acme factory. Volatar was cut simply because there wasn't enough time to animate him. Another thing the third drift scrap revealed was, during Doom's reveal at the end, his toon mouth was supposed to be visible through his mask, along with toon hands with long fingernails. Doom also shot tiny mini daggers from his eyes into Eddie's face at one point. I'm not sure if this is a deleted bit or just something that was exclusively for this publicity shot. Hmm. Another deleted bit is a scene where Doom holds a trial for the toon shoe that he dips. There's a whole jury of kangaroos giving a guilty verdict. Speaking of the toon shoe, most people believe that Doom just dips this innocent little shoe as a demonstration for the dip. Well, blink and you'll miss it, but the shoe actually assaults a police officer by kicking him in the crotch. He probably didn't mean to. Death by dip was still very extreme, but still. GUILTY! And since I'm such an obsessive nerd over this, I am constantly on the lookout for any scans of animation cells or frames without animation of Doom's reveal at the very end. No, I'm not looking to add any original cells or photos to my collection, just scans. So if anyone has any more that isn't shown here, please let me know. I'd love to see them. And I may be the only person who has discovered this, but in the movie, there's even a couple of frames without animated eyes. How I discovered this, I'd really rather not talk about it. I'm incredibly bored.
I saw this for the first time at three years old. As soon as I saw his fake eyeballs hit the floor while he reinflated himself, my anxiety levels maxed out. And once he turned his head with his manic smile and bulging red eyes, speaking in that squeaky voice, I talked! I screamed. I bawled. In fact, I found zero comfort in him melting because even at that age, I knew how VHS worked. That bastard still existed on the tape and years and years of reoccurring nightmares resulted in this, including one where Doom captured me and force fed me rotten mac and cheese with maggots. Yeah, that happened. But the messed up thing was I also became obsessed. I always wanted to watch the damn movie because of it. I must have hated myself. So that's a wrap on Judge Doom, my favorite villain of all time. I'm bouncing around the idea of making this the start of a villain series? Let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in. I'm slowly starting to get my groove on with this channel. Hopefully get a constant flow of videos coming regularly soon. Balancing life, blah blah blah. If you like this video, modestly tap the like button. You don't gotta smash it. I'm not a monster. monster. Alright, later guys.